Good morning to all. Now I am going to take about a seminar topic in PCR, Polymerase Chain Reaction. Already we study about this topic in UG. Now we are going to see about the PCR in briefly. First of all, PCR is inverted by Carey Mullis and his colleagues in the year of 1983. They got the Nobel Prize in the invention in the year of 1993. The PCR is a copying machine for DNA molecules. What is mean by PCR? Polymerase chain reaction is a method widely used to rapidly make millions to billions of copies of a specific DNA sample. DNA amplification In a crime scene, a sample of DNA was found, however, amount of DNA was not enough to be analyzed. After DNA extraction, the scientists want to study a specific part of a gene to do sequencing. The solution is to do amplification of parts of DNA. Amplifying segment of DNA can be divided into two types, polymerase chain reaction and cloning. The first one is polymerase chain reaction. In this reaction, original DNA to be replicated. This DNA to separate in the method of denaturation. And the next step is annealing. This annealing nitrogen bond and nucleotide is bind. This bind nitrogen bond and nucleotide is elongated in the method of elongation. This elongation method, many copies of DNA can be formed. The previous steps are followed to make the many copies of DNA. Then next one is cloning. In the cloning method, gene donor and uh, plasmid donor are present. In the gene donor, isolated gene and the plasmid donor to form isolate of, isolation of bacterial plasmid. Plasmid opened with restricted enzyme. DNA linkage binds ends together. This uh, isolated gene and the bacterial plasmids are bind in the enzyme of linkage. Recombinant DNA molecule formed. This recombinant DNA molecule transformation of fresh bacterium. And the fresh bacterium to form donor gene. This donor gene undergoes transcription to form mRNA. This mRNA uh, to undergo the trans translation to form the protein product. Next, PCR, polymerase chain reaction. PCR is a means to amplify a particular piece of DNA. Amplify, making numerous copies of a segment of DNA. PCR can make billions of copies of a target sequence of DNA in short time. And then it is a laboratory version of DNA replication in cells. The laboratory version is commonly called in vitro since it occurs in a test tube while in vivo um, sig signifies occurring in a living cell. Next, amplification of a specific target sequence. PCR does not copy all of the DNA in the sample. It copies only a very specific sequence of genetic code from a template DNA targeted by PCR primers. It does record the knowledge of some DNA sequence information which flanks the fragment of DNA to be amplified. From this information, two synthetic oligonucleotide primers may be chemically synthesized e each complementary to a stretch of DNA to the three side of the target DNA. One oligonucleotide for each of the two DNA strands. DNA polymerase can add a nucleotide only onto a pre-existing 3OH group. First, PCR primers must bind to sequence on either side of the target sequence on opposite strands. First one is primer annealing site and the center one is region of DNA to be amplified by PCR and the last one is primer annealing site. Then when target DNA is single stranded, primers bind and allow DNA polymerase to work. Why we need two primers? 
In a PCR reactions, you need two primers to amplify the target sequence. One primer is called forward primer and then other prim primer is called reverse primer. Uh, first one is forward primer which have the same sequence of forward DNA strand and bind to the complementary reverse strand. And the next one is reverse primer which have the same sequence of reverse DNA strand and bind to the complementary forward strand. If there is only one primer, only one strand of the double standard DNA will be amplified in the PCR reaction. Components of PCR DNA sample, primers, nucleotides, polymerase, mix buffer and then PCR tube. Next PCR cycle. PCR proceed in three distinct steps governed by temperature. First one is denaturation 95 degrees Celsius. Second one is annealing 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. And then third one is extension 72 degrees Celsius. First denaturation. The double standard template DNA is denatured by heating typically to 95 degrees Celsius to separate the double standard DNA. And then second one is annealing. The reaction is rapidly cooled to an annealing temperature to allow the oligonucleotide primer to hybridize to the template. And then last one is extension. The reaction is heated to a temperature typically 72 degrees Celsius for efficient DNA synthesis by the thermostable DNA polymerase. First one is denaturation. The double standard template DNA is denatured by heating typically to 95 degrees Celsius to separate the double standard DNA. Breaking the bonds. First step is 94 to 97 degrees Celsius DNA can be separated. And the next one is annealing. The reaction is rapidly cooled to the primer annealing temperature 50 to 65 degrees Celsius to allow the oligonucleotide primers to hybridize to single standard template. Primer will anneal only to sequence that are complementary to them. This is the step to 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. And then last one is extension. The reaction is heated to a temperature depends on the DNA polymerase used. Commonly a temperature of 72 degrees Celsius is used with this enzyme. This means that 72 degrees Celsius is the optimum of DNA polymerase. At this step the DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand complementary to the DNA template. This is the step 3, 72 degrees Celsius. Next, this is the graph of PCR cycle. Uh, X axis is the time and the Y axis is the temperature. First one is denaturation. This denaturation uh, temperature is 94 to 97 degrees Celsius. And then annual primers. This temperature is 50 to 65 degrees Celsius and then last one is extend primers. This temperature is 72 degrees Celsius. At the end of the PCR reaction, the specific sequence will be accumulated in billions of copies. In only 20 cycles, PCR can product about a million copy of the target. Performing PCR steps. First step, identification, the location of the target sequence in the DNA template. Second one, primer design and primer specificity. Third one, PCR optimization. Fourth one, post PCR analysis results using agros gel electrophoresis. And then fifth one, PCR troubleshooting. And then last one, start your PCR and visualize the result by AGC, a gross gel. For example, you want to study a mutation in a DLG3 gene and how it related to memory. Find the sequence of the gene from any website. Example, Ensemble. Determine your target region. The segment that you want to amplify is in the 
red square. Design the primers using primer design tool. Example, primer 3. Then send them to any company who will synthesize them. Make sure that the area that you want to study is between the primers. The region to be studied should be between the forward and reverse primer. Check primer specificity by blast. Optimize your PCR and troubleshooting. Start PCR. Start PCR. Uh, first one is denaturation. This is 95 degree Celsius. And then second one is annealing. This is 58 degree Celsius to form forward and reverse primers. And then last one is extension to form a polymerase. DNA polymerase. This is 72 degree Celsius. This DNA polymerase 1 DNA amplified to 2 DNAs. And then PCR advantages. This PCR is simplicity, easier methodology, sensitive, extensively validated standard operating procedure and availability of reagents and equipment. PCR application, genotyping, RT-PCR, cloning, mutation detection, sequencing, microarrays, forensics, paternity testing. And then PCR optimization. There is no single set of conditions that is optimal for all PCR reactions. Next lab. Primer design guidelines. Primer sequence. Primer length GC percent. GC clamp. Melting temperature. Annealing. And then temperature. Primer design guidelines. Primer sequence. must be complementary to flanking sequence of target region avoid complementary sequence between primers repeat miss miss primer and runs miss primer mismatch at three end cross homology primer length it is generally accepted that the optimal length of primer is 18 to 25 bp not too long nor too short GC content, GC percent, number of G and C in the primer as a percentage of the total basis should be 40 to 60 percent. GC clamp, presence of G or C basis within the last 5 basis from the 3 end of primers, not more than 2 G or C. And then melting temperature. Melting temperatures in the range of 50 to 60 degrees Celsius generally produce the best results. Maximum difference between primer pairs is 5 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the primer can be calculated by the following formula. Temperature equal to G plus C into 4 plus A plus T into 2. Annealing temperature. The primer melting temperature is the estimate of the DNA to DNA hybrid stability and critical in determining the annealing temperature. Depends directly on length and GC composition of the primers. Too high temperature produce insufficient primer template hybridization. Too low temperature lead to non-specific product caused by a high number of base pair mismatches. That's all about the PCR. Thank you.